What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel, the sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. All right, guys, let's just jump into this today. I'm just going to put it out there, and I'm going to say it very plainly. Midnight has arrived for the Eagles. The hour is upon us to where we either need to get our shit together or you know what? Pack up and get the hell up out the way. Something's got to give here. There's a lot of unanswered questions here from the coaching staff to skill position players to the quarterback we just gave over $100 million to. I'm not going to say that this entire season has been Carson Wentz's fault. But you know what? If you're going to rise above just being a good quarterback and you're going to approach the territory of being a great quarterback, you know what? At some point, you got to just win. You got to win. And I think today starts that journey of, look, we either win or we don't. Let's jump into it. And rush. Still pressure. Wentz just going to air it out. Going way deep down the field. He my uh, my father used to have a way with words. And what he used to tell me when I was indecisive, and I know you guys have heard this before, is at a certain point, you either got to shit or get off the pot. Guess what, Philadelphia? It's time we either shit or get off the pot. Because the truth be told, the play ain't been acceptable, guys. We've had a lot. We've had a lot of bad misfortune. That's true. There are reasons why we lost some of the games. But then you have games to where, for some weird reason, the secondary. Now, mind you, we weren't in a perfect condition with the corners we had playing in Minnesota. But the corners weren't the problem in Minnesota, if anyone watched the film on that. It was the safeties, who were veteran guys, who couldn't communicate and didn't understand how to properly play quarters defense. That's not – you can't blame that. That's, that's on leadership not being leaders. Dallas, I've never seen an effort where players came out so flat after a coach put his foot in his mouth and said some shit he shouldn't have said, and then instead of just sticking to it and, oh, shit, it's already out there, I might as well back it up, try to retract the statement, which made it way worse. There's no effort there. And then the last draw was this Miami game. I warned. I warned this team was a lot better than a lot of fans thought. People sometimes get really caught up in the records. They don't really pay attention to the trends of teams, seeing that that team had actually been playing a lot better since Fitzpatrick was reinserted into the lineup for the second time, and they were picking up momentum. Still, not it's not excusable to lose to that team. I mean, I thought they would compete. I didn't think you were going to get, you know, a 20-point blowout. I thought they were going to probably be in it with a chance to win, but I thought the Eagles would be able to pull that off. I'm not going to lie. We've suffered some misfortune, guys. Jordan Howard going down has been a dagger. Three straight losses. Complete loss of, of offensive identity. And to put the cherry on top, we ended up getting back Alshon Jeffrey, Nelson Aguilar. We started getting back offensive weapons and pieces. Now, mind you, we know that Zach Ertz was banged up that game, and he had a pretty damn bad game playing injured. But still, the pieces were all there, minus Jordan Howard, minus Deshaun Jackson. The offense put up points, but they still left meat on the bone. I mean, it's time, guys. It's time for this season. It's time that somebody acts like a leader on this football team and leads it. And at a certain point, it's got to be Carson. It's got to be Carson Wentz. He can't control what the defense does. He can't control his decision-making. Even if you get plays that are designed to go to someone, if it ain't open, you got to come off that progression and read. Even if it's play design there. You got to come off that read, man. And you got to, I know it's going to cause conflict, but you know what? There's not a whole lot Doug Peterson can say if we're winning. No one's going to take it seriously. And I'm telling you, as a guy who knows football, there are times, it's this is Doug Peterson, this is not Carson Wentz. There are clearly points in games where I'm looking where they were designed plays and the shit ain't open. He didn't do a good job of selling it. He didn't do a good job of, of reading the down the distance. He didn't do a good job of not being so predictable in the play calling. 
and it's really on Peterson. With that said, when you roll the film, at a certain point in time, man, you got to understand, Doug will be gone before you're gone. That's just the truth. If it ain't open, you got to move on to the next progression. Even if you're only really in a two to three, you know, read progression. But you know from pre-snap that, wow, like, someone's going to be open on the other side of this read that's not part of this. You got to put it out there, man. <laughs> put it out there. To be honest with you, I understand at times doing a, you know, the half field concept, doing hot reads, stuff like that. But that needs to be a very limited part of the playbook. I think it's time we opened up full read concepts here, guys. This is ridiculous at this point. Carson Wentz isn't a Drew Brees type. Okay? He's not going to be a timing and rhythm quarterback. That's not him. You're trying to force someone to play a style of football that's not them. I, I promise you, it doesn't matter if it's Tom Brady. If you take Tom Brady out of what he does successfully, he's going to fucking lose in this league. The trick is, is to understand your personnel and adapt around it. It makes no sense what we're trying to do here, guys. Many of you guys have pointed out what, what's happening with the run. I mean, I understood when I looked through the, through the film, we didn't necessarily abandon the run until the game really got to the point where you couldn't run the ball anymore. But at the same time, that's only one side of the argument. The other side of the argument is, is why wasn't the game plan involved more with the run? Like, why were we going empty back set and shit like that on first downs? No, dude. Like, someone needs to take away your fucking play calling if you're doing stupid shit like that. That, that can't happen. This offense is too far out of rhythm for you to be doing shit like that. You've got to start this team off with positive momentum, even if it's only two or three yards. Because you know what? A second and six, or, or I'm sorry, a third and six or a third and four is a hell of a lot better than a third and 10, 15, 20. The success rate of converting on a third and four or third and six is going to be a hell of a lot higher than a third and 10 or 15 or so forth. We do stupid shit at times, and it's time that the guys that are supposed to be leaders of this organization, Doug Peterson, Carson Wentz, Malcolm Jenkins, I won't even put Brandon Graham in there because I, I don't think it's a fair assessment of Brandon Graham or Fletcher Cox. I think those guys have been playing their asses off of recent. The secondary had a letdown last game. Once again, Jim Schwartz, back to the leadership topic. Come on, guys. They figured you out. They adjusted and said, fuck that. We're not holding the ball. We're going to throw this shit under three seconds, two and a half seconds. To be appropriate with the timing there. That's a quick timing offense. You got to adjust. <laughs> you got to start playing press. You can't just let them get seven, eight yards every damn time they drop back. Newsflash. That's going to convert every time. Now you're dependent upon you being able to, to hold off inside of the red zone. This is not, I get the bend, don't break mentality, but when you're, when you're breaking, come on now. It's time to shake shit up. This game, we've got to see it from Carson. It's got to come out from Carson Wentz. I don't mean having a good game. He had a good game against Miami. He objectively had a very good game, but it wasn't great. It wasn't great. His mechanics were still off a little bit. That's easily cleaned up things that can happen. There were times where like I said, I'm pretty sure from looking at the film, it looks like Doug Peterson screwed him over there. He had pre, you know, pre-reads already built into a particular play. But Carson's got to be like, look, let me ask you a question, guys. In Peyton Manning's fourth year, I don't give a damn if it's Bill Belichick as his coach. If the play call ain't there, the progression, I'm sorry, not play call, the progressions aren't there. And they had built in like a three read progression, but he sees a four three that's not supposed to be part of that progression. Do you think Pete, Pete Manning's hesitating on throwing that ball there? No. Not at all. Tom Brady. No, not at all. <laughs> Come on. At a certain point, and I'm not trying to put Carson in those categories, like those are all time greats. But the point being, you can see when that kind of stuff happens, you got to rise above it. And it's, it's a difficult situation to put a guy into. I agree. But it has to be done. If Doug Peterson is shit in the bed on play calling, you got to rise above his shitty-ass play calling. 
and to Doug Peterson, bro, you need to learn how to run the ball or you're going to get your ass run out of Philly, ironically. It's getting ridiculous at this point, man. You're saying shit like, oh, this is a passing league. How's that working out for you, dude? It's a passing league. Yeah, the league is passing your ass by. Tell that to the Ravens, the 49ers, and a, a list of other teams that are running the ball successfully and have great records right now. Looking like they're probably going to get a first round buy. Maybe home field advantage, depending on how things shake. No, nah, bro. It's not a passing league. The league's passing you by. This is it for me, guys. Like, if you start dropping these, this four game stretch, it's not excusable. These are teams you've got to beat. These are teams that you're objectively better than, minus Dallas. I think there's a, an argument to Dallas with the injuries the Eagles have suffered with, like, not having Jordan Howard, not having Deshaun Jackson. Like, then I think you could argue, like, come on, Dallas has got a better football team without those guys there, offensively at least. Now, if Jordan Howard's back in the lineup, I think it's more of a push there in terms of the talent. So, win. It's midnight. You better win because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Jeffrey Lurie coming to practices, him coming out and speaking to the media. This is a quiet dude who doesn't do this type of stuff. You better start winning, I'm telling you right now. I think bigger changes than people expect will happen. That's all I'm going to say about it. I don't think Jeffrey Lurie is the kind of guy who's going to accept mediocrity. That's not his stick. If he was going to accept mediocrity, Chip Kelly would still be here. Because he, that was a mediocre coach. It's a guy that could win you some, you know, have a couple 10-game win seasons. And then he just faded into obscurity. Eventually had a really bad losing season, and he got the axe. I got to tell you, Doug Peterson is really lucky we had that magical run in 2017, or else I think this would be the end of his road without getting into the playoffs. But at the end of the day, he did win the Super Bowl. He's proved to be capable of winning a Super Bowl with the right coaching staff and the right personnel around him. We got to get back to that. He's got to do better. You don't have the team to throw the football 45, 50 times. You don't have that team around you. I know it's difficult because you're relying on a very young running back. But you know what? You got bad football teams ahead of you. Teams that can grow a young running back to do the right thing. Got to do it. We got to take some of this load off of Carson Wentz. And for the love of God, can we move this kid around in the pocket? Can we do the things he's good at? There's no excuses you drop this game. You drop this game, and I'm telling you right now, Super Bowl winning coaches normally get three seasons. This is only your second. Drop these games at the end of the season and see if Philadelphia awards you a third season. I think you're playing with fire. All right. That's what I got for y'all. Look, there can't be excuses. They need to come out here and they need to win this football game. This is a team that's managed to put together two wins who has some talent on that football team. Offensively, there is talent on that football team. Saquon Barkley, Darius Slay. Ingram, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, they can score. However, we've got to be better. <clears throat> we've got to be better. Can't be excuses tonight, guys. It's time to win. Hopefully, tomorrow or this evening, when I come back and I make another video, hopefully it's a happy video. Hopefully it's a video of, okay, now we've got something on our hands. Because let me tell you, the way I said, I don't think the Giants are going to give up. I wouldn't look at the Redskins and think they're giving up either. Some of these teams, are, are they're trying to build momentum going into the following season. It's time to play hard. It's time to play hard. You come out there and you give a half ass effort, you're going to catch an L. We got to give 100% here. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm out of here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, gentlemen, let's not make excuses for them. It's time to win. No more bullshit. It's time to win.